Welcome to Wednesday night ESPN College Basketball in the Big 12 from the Lloyd Noble Center, Norman, Oklahoma. The 20th ranked Oklahoma Sooners hosting the Kansas State Wildcats. Well, just four days ago on Saturday, both the Wildcats and Sooners picked up last second wins. K-State's Barry Brown, it's a game-winning layup with four seconds left for the win at Iowa State, 58-57, a game-high 23 for Brown. Same day, OU's Christian Doolittle with less than three seconds left. The game winner to lift the Sooners over number 25 TCU, 76-74. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday night from Norman along with former Duke assistant coach and Army guard Chris Patola. I'm Mark Neely. In that game Saturday, Chris, for Kansas State, Dean Wade returns after missing yeah. six games with a foot injury. What can we expect in game two back for Dean? Well, when he's healthy, he's their best all-around player. He takes them to a much higher level because he's a matchup nightmare. He does a lot of different things. He can score it, didn't score it well the other night, only had one bucket, but had nine rebounds. He's really a tough matchup for Oklahoma here tonight and a lot of teams in this conference. Well, Christian James for Oklahoma right now, top four in the Big 12 in both points and rebounds. Hasn't shot it well of late, but he is a stat stuffer. Over 16 a game, like you said, he's a monster on the glass, has expanded his game. Another really tough matchup. John Higgins puts the ball in the air, and it's Kansas State wearing the black that has the game's first possession tonight. Both teams come in at 2-2 two and two in conference play. Hey, Ween. Here's Dean Wade. Cut off in the lane by Kalixty. Shoots over and puts in the game's first points. So he's already matched his point total from game one at Iowa State. Oklahoma does a lot of switching, and you're going to end up switching on to Dean Wade. There, Kalixty, undersized relative to the 6'10 Wade, who just shot it right over him. Barry Brown knocked it out of the hands of Jamani McNeese, creating the turnover. They get it to Wade. You kind of get the feeling they want to get Wade going offensively early. He already has the game's first bucket. Tries to make it two, and off the left iron, no good. And he was a little hesitant in that game coming back. He actually had looks, passed up on some. Didn't look like he was comfortable shooting it from the perimeter, which he can do. But like you said, force feeding him early here. Wade only attempted five shots in that game. Hit one, which came in a very key spot in the win. And Iowa State with the left hand, McNeese too strong. I think Bruce Weber would tell you that the, the thing he did do is you have to guard him. You know, whether, whether you think he's going to make a shot or not, he's capable of it. And so it, it opens things up for guys like Barry Brown, Cam Stokes. You know, by the way, Wade did have a game high nine rebounds as well in Apes. <laughs> oh, by the way. Down to five on the shot clock. May Wayne going to have to do something with it. Long jumper, got it. And clearly the scouting report says they're, they're okay living with May Wayne taking that 15-foot shot. So defense has been the calling card for both these teams. Top 10 in adjusted defense. They have won games this year because of how good they are on that defensive side. Season 7 for Bruce Weber. He's got a pretty good record against OU, 8-4. 2-4 record away from Manhattan against them. His team, let's face it, they lost their first two conference games and they were down 21 points to West Virginia. They were staring 0-3 in the face in a trip to Ames. They're kind of back from the dead here early in conference play. Well, they were stay, staring 0-4 in the face until Barry Brown hits a magnificent shot to beat Iowa State. So, I mean, that's the margin. Winning and losing is they, they could very easily be 0-4. Brown with the bucket. He's this week's Big 12 Player of the Week. First time in his career he has earned that honor, which kind of surprised a lot of us that have been around the conference for so many years that that was his first. Christian James powering his way, but he traveled. He can really score, and he's gotten back to driving the basketball. And they are just not well defended. A little miscommunication. Oklahoma is going to use a timeout, and we'll step aside and be back in 30 seconds. Kansas State's hit three of their first four shots tonight. 
Oklahoma's missed their first two, and it's the Wildcats out to the early 6-0 lead. K-State's a team that can certainly go through some offensive routes. And there have been a number of games where they've fallen behind big early. They look to avoid that tonight here in Norman. And Barry Brown has been on a tear. He's got 52 points in their last two games. And I said he's gotten back to driving the ball. 18 of those 52 points have come on dunks or layups. See the numbers nationally. Keep in mind there's 351 Division I teams. A lot of numbers in the 300s there. Offensively for K-State. May Wade to spin, move into a double team, but a nice bounce pass down low. And Wade has four points. Oklahoma not talking in the early going here. Rotations have come late. And K-State doing a nice job taking advantage. Kalixti. Knocks it all for the first bucket of the night for the Sooners. Guy who's a grad transfer from Maine, Aaron Kalixti. Little push underneath on Freeman. The Sooner foul is called on Pat Freeman, his first. Eli Kruger facing his alma mater. Eighth season as the Oklahoma head coach. It's a much different offensive team this year without Trey Young. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's it's been a more efficient offense this year. Well, they, they have flipped the script. That's what the kids say, Mark, uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, they are significantly older, one of the youngest teams in the country last year. Now they're one of the oldest. They were an offensive juggernaut at times last year. Uh, couldn't guard anybody, and, and now they are much better defensively. One of the top ten teams in the country there, and at times have struggled on the offense then. Yeah, the scoring numbers nationally way down, but the defense, which is really what Lon Kruger hangs his hat on, is the defense. So they're playing much more of a Lon Kruger style, so to speak, again. They're grittier, they're tougher, there's a defensive character that they've been able to lean on, and, and, and I agree with you. Right? Like, that is much more a team that Lon Kruger is comfortable coaching. Sooners have turned it over three times on their sixth possession, so to begin the game, that's a three from Cam Stokes. Long rebound tipped by James to the baseline, where it's grabbed by K-State Xavier Steve. Back to Brown. Stokes with Freeman at his face. Nice bounce pass. Wade with the left hand. It couldn't fall over that front rim. Point blank attempt there for Wade. And the other way, Kalixti, who hit a long jumper earlier, a three misses that one. And James thought he had the offensive rebound. But out with it comes Camp Stokes. Pass underneath that actually hit the net, and it's passed by Sneed to Bay Wayne, who misses the jumper, and Sneed the offensive rebound. K-State playing with energy. You know, one of the words that Bruce Weber used a ton in his shoot-around, said he was going to write it on the board, was emotion. They are energized to start this game. Ahead for James. Tried to reverse lay in, missed it. Back comes Kansas State. Brown sealed off there by Kalixti. Well, definitely a little more pep in the step of K-State right now. A nice up and under move, getting by Freeman. And Wade has six points to begin tonight. I'm telling you, when he gets back into game shape, he gets his legs under him. He, he is one of the toughest matchups in America. They posted him. He could hit that face-up shot. And the ceiling for this Kansas State team grows exponentially. Freeman stopped there and looking for a three-second call, and they got it. Timeout. Well, here in Norman, Oklahoma, news from the gridiron is always front and center, and some big stuff came down today. Back with that after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Well, the last two Heisman winners to play quarterback at Oklahoma, Jalen Hurts announcing today he's transferred from Alabama here to Norman and will play next year for the Sooners. That, that was a, a bombshell that dropped here in Norman when we were at the shoot-around today, and uh, the town's buzzing about it. How about the 
the pair on Jalen Hurts to say, I'm okay following two Heisman <laughs> Trophy winners. <laughs> I mean, really, yes. I, I, to me, I think it's the Lincoln Riley effect. I mean, you, you, were, you and I were talking about this earlier today. Like, that, by the way, is Roy Williams, former DB great here at Oklahoma. I think, I think quarterbacks want to come play for Lincoln Riley. So is Kyler Murray going to play baseball or football? It's looking like football. I'll tell you, that is a bad look for baseball. To, to not be able to get that guy who would instantly be one of the five most recognizable baseball players that they would have. That's a bad loss. For me. Here's your four million bucks back. I'm going to go play football. That's, that's, a, a, that's a bad <laughs> look for Major League Baseball. I'm telling you. Oklahoma ball. Right now the Sooners just trying to take better care of the ball. They've turned it over five times. They're not off to a good shooting start. Just one of five from the field. and A seven-point deficit here. And Jamal Bienemy now in the game along with Miles Reynolds. Here's Reynolds getting in the lane, puts it up after some contact, and that's an offensive foul as Mike McGurl taking the charge for the Wildcats. Well, Miles Reynolds had been a starter for Lon Kruger, but with the return from injury of Jamani McNeese, that has put Miles Reynolds back to coming off the bench as he does so again tonight. And they were, you know, and that's a change. I mean, that's kind of one of those adjustments that Oklahoma's had to make with their lineup. They feel like they are a much better team once they get McNeese back to the guy he was before he got hurt. Cartier Giada. Late shot clock, McGurl, three, down to two. Off in time from Stokes, Swish. Camp Stokes, and it's a 10-point lead for K-State. They are very deliberate offensively. They're going to work to get the shot they want, and they're going to grind you down on that end. And it actually helps their defense. The defense is helped if you play good offense. Odoms gets it to crawl over the rim. And one for senior Richard Odoms. What a strong drive. You mentioned a senior. He's not a shooter. He's only attempted six threes on a year. That's what he does. And look at that body. Only played eight minutes on Saturday in the win over TCU. Only attempted. Only picked up one point. Did not attempt a field goal. The guy who was born in Anchorage, Alaska. Can't finish off the three-point play. It stays 13-5, K-State. Levi Stockard off the right side. Karen's towards the sideline, and it's last touch by K-State. I believe it was Austin Trice who touched it last for the Wildcats. One of the other reasons these teams are so good on the defensive end is they're outstanding defensive rebounding teams. And so they're typically only having to guard for one shot. K-State's been active, though, on the offensive glass, keeping things alive. Well, a jumper there for Miles Reynolds. We talked about Reynolds, grad transfer from Maine, Chicago native, had been a starter, really one of their vocal leaders to begin the year. It's an amazing story. It's his third school in four years. It started at St. Louis U. Stockard underneath, foul on the floor. Timeout. It's been a good start for K State on the road. They're up six with under 12 minutes to play first half. Star-studded Saturday full of NBA, college hoops, and UFC on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ABC. Yeah, we're still three days from Saturday, but playing on a big one, beginning with the Thunder Sixers on ABC. That Virginia Duke game is going to be great. Lakers Rockets, and then you got Cahedo against Dillashaw finishing things off. I got the messenger, by the way, in that one, which the is Cahedo. Your UFC knowledge always astounds. It always astounds. I saw you on the Ken, Ken Palm site for UFC today. You checking the analytics. You all ready? It's all about the analytics these days and whatever sport. May Wayne back in. Tough shot at a double team. Didn't find the rim. And Manic deflects it to Christian Doolittle. 
Sooners haven't really found an offensive flow yet here tonight. No, they haven't. And they have six turnovers, which hasn't helped. And they've had a guard on the other end, which I think has affected their defense. Tough shot, Reynolds a miss. Doolittle underneath. Bouncing out of bounds, and it's saved by Jada. And coming the other way, Barry Brown drives and scores. K-State just putting a lot of pressure. They're being opportunistic again. I think they're delivered offensively. There they take advantage of the open floor, and I think it's affected Oklahoma and how it's running its offense. They've had to grind so much on the defensive end. And just a broken play, and then Barry Brown first to the ball, and he gets the step on Manic. And the defensive balance, not great for Oklahoma. Seven turnovers already here in the first half for Oklahoma. And they had nine total turnovers in their win over TCU. And right now, Ron Kruger's team trying to figure out Kansas State. They wounded back up to a 10-point lead as Mayween has four points. And they're all layups. Kansas State just living right at the basket. Odoms. Foul going to the rim. By the way, Jamani McNeese on the bench with two fouls for Oklahoma. Some early foul trouble for him. And McNeese, who recently come back from an injury of his own. Hurt an ankle, sprained his ankle in practice in early December. It certainly isn't 100%. That's quite an athlete on the floor for McNeese when he gets out there. He can bring you the exciting. <laughs> Sometimes he can show his inexperience, but he's yes. definitely a player all you want on the floor. And some issues at the line to start the game as well. Turnovers and missed free throws. And then defensive lapses. So a lot of this crossing stuff right here, this, this motion, and then you're getting the roll by the big guy. But girl swishes a three. And Kansas State up 13 midway through the first half. One of their games last week, Bruce Weber wrote on the board, start fast. They have not started games well against West Virginia, Texas Tech. In both games, they got down 17-3 to to start those games. You know, perhaps the turning point is halftime of the West Virginia game when Barry Brown basically challenged his team and said, hey, if you're not going to go out there and try to win, don't even come out of the locker room. And his team responded with their largest comeback in school history. Sneed. Just a little off with that three. Great set by Doolittle. James faces up on the girl. Odoms, one dribble, goes up and scores. And really, Richard Odoms and Miles Reynolds have been their best offense so far tonight. It's a team that's been hit or miss offensively. James, their leading scorer, has really struggled in the last four games. So they're searching for that guy to step forward. Pass for May Ween. He's fortunate to come away with it. He shoots the 15-footer. Kalixti, cross court, open three, James, and he's short with it. And the issues continue for Christian James, who hasn't shot from range well here in the last four or five games. And he's starting to press, I think. I mean, he's got to get some stuff going to the basket, get himself to the foul line. The numbers there are stark. And, you know, three-point shooting, not what he is. He, he has become a more efficient shooter from there, but it's not what he is and what he does. And I think it's starting to affect his mindset. He's pressing. He had 15 points in the win Saturday against TCU, but missed all four of his three-point attempts. Stokes lost it out of bounds. A rare Kansas State turnover, just their second. Manic. Stop for Manic. Certainly has the range. 
Pass in the lane. Odoms again. You know, they got some movement. The ball moved. They moved bodies. There wasn't as much standing. You, you've got to make Kansas State work on the defensive end. And a foul stops the clock. Seven-point lead for K-State. And Brady Maddock, the sophomore for Oklahoma, some similarities to the great Larry Bird. Beyond the bucket with my partner coming back. Here with Brady Manick. Uh, Brady, most icons are always reassessing their image, changing up their look. Uh, you had a buzz cut last year. You've come back with a different look. A lot of folks comparing it to Larry Bird, a legend. Uh, what do you make of this? We got it up on the screen here. With the, what, what do you make of the side-by-side -side there? I mean, it kind of looks like me. Uh, probably a long, long time ago, uh, back in the the golden days, but I mean, uh, that, 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 that's pretty close. It's not even just the stash and, and the luscious locks. Like, you guys, take a look at this photo. You, you guys, a lot like body language too on the court. You guys are yeah. very, some, look at that flow you have going in that, that is photo. That is incredible. I haven't seen that one yet. I saw one close, but uh, now that, that is some hair right there. Larry Legend had uh, a great career uh, at Indiana State. What do you hope to, to make out of your career here at Oklahoma? Well, those uh, numbers are a little different, but I hope to pick mine up some and uh, help the team out any way I can. All right, I love it. Thanks for Probably. doing this. Yeah. Well, the, the dry sense of humor of Brady Maddox, I think shines through there. Yeah, the numbers are different. Larry Bird was Larry Bird. Here's, on, here's Wade underneath. Well, those numbers were a little different. <laughs> 30 compared to 10, but uh, and you did use the term luscious locks. Well, it, Stokes, you know, it's not my first time around good hair, you know, or a salon. Or, uh, he was a good sport for doing that. He, he's, he's become a better player. You know, I think he kind of took a dive uh, last year. He, he got sick at one point, lost a lot of weight. He put on 20 pounds in the offseason. He's a much better rebounder this year. Wide open three, missed by Sean Neal Williams. A travel committed by Oklahoma and Kalixti as they turn it over for a ninth time here in the first half. A dispute there from Coach Kruger and the Sooners on the call from John Higgins. Manic last year, the buzz cut. And the freshman, and now this year. You, you can't deny the similarities physically with Larry Bird. That's a strong choice, though. That photo on the left to the right, I mean, that is a, that is a real change to an image right there. That looks like a different guy. Oklahoma's on a 6-0 run here to cut into a 13-point deficit, and Richard, who had not missed his first three from the field, misses on shot number four tonight. Sneed. Brown from 18, wow. rattles home. You know he's feeling it too. He had Wade on the throwback, which I think as you get more and more used to Wade being on the floor, that probably comes back to him. But what a tough shot by Barry Brown, who was feeling it of late. Barry Brown making his 100th career start tonight for Kansas State in his 122nd career appearance. It's a tough shot. Here's that handoff, and Wade is wide open there, top of the key. Brown says, no, no, I got this. Right in the face of the defender. And this team, I'm telling you, this, this team, you know, goes to the Elite Eight last year, brings back basically everybody, and they've got that potential again. Now that they're starting to get healthy, Brown is starting to become more of, of an offensive attacker. Call that on Freeman. New Zealand native picks up his second. Kansas State with that Elite Eight run last year. Really did that Elite Eight run without Dean Wade, who got hurt in the Big 12 tournament. But they returned just about all their production from a year ago. 93%. 
their scoring, assists. Well, and the thing about their group is, is they, look, Wade is a good player, Brown are, are good players. They can, to some extent, get their own shots. But this team, they need each other to score and win, and they know that. And I think when you bring back an older group, and older groups are typically more secure in who they are, they're willing to give up a good shot to get a better one. I, I think that's who this Kansas State team is, is starting to become. Dean Wade with eight points in his nine minutes play. Doolittle with his first bucket tonight for the Sooners. And there's a guy, Christian Doolittle, who's trajectory is rising fast as a scorer, as a leader on a lot of different levels for the Sooners this year. Five minutes to play first half. The half that K-State has led from the get-go as Stokes will off the right side with a three, deflecting out the enemy now. The enemy dribbles into the leg quickly and fouled trying to get to the rim. Now that's what Miles Reynolds does. I mean, he just pushes and has given them an explosive handler in the open floor. And he's very good at getting himself to the foul line by pushing early. So Oklahoma, as good as they've been defensively, can really, really score in transition. Coming up Saturday, another big SEC-ACC doubleheader on ESPN. It starts at 4 Eastern, number 12, Kentucky, number 14, Auburn. Then Zion Williamson, number one, Duke, look to bounce back from Monday's loss to Syracuse. And they host number four and undefeated Virginia Cameron Indoor to Sonic Blockbuster. You can see that on the app as well. They stayed up by eight. They have led by as many as 13. Hey, we need a looking now hands off the ground. James Chase Brown all the way to midcourt and quick hands creates a steal back to James. He finishes over Steve. Tough, tough for Christy James. That gets James on the board with his first bucket. And a little run here for Oklahoma has pulled in within six. 409 to play first half from here in Norman. K-State OU. Chris, thanks. You know, Dallin and, and Sean, you took the words out of our mouth because we were talking about how really OU seems fortunate to only be down six points right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we, ten turnovers and only down six in a low possession half. Uh, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. And I think some of the, this run has been scoring some layups. They've had trouble in the half court. Credit Kansas State's defense. Shot clock violation. Well, the, the comments from Scotty Pippen about Zion Williamson today basically saying he thinks Zion's done enough for college basketball and that he should shut it down, stop playing, and wait for the NBA draft. And certainly Scotty's entitled to his opinion, one of the all-time greats, but those of us who are on college basketball would hate to see that. Well, he's entitled to his opinion. That opinion happens to be ludicrous. <laughs> I mean, all the things that Scotty said about Zion are true, but that doesn't mean that he should shut it down as a result of those things. I mean, they have a chance to win a national championship. He has a chance to continue to get better as a player. I mean, that, that type of an opinion is, is it's uninformed, to be quite frank. I think if we got a hold of actor, rapper, Ludacris himself, he would think it's Ludacris. In and out. 
So they say, can you do that? Can you I, get in touch with Ludacris? I, I, I don't have Ludacris on, on his number on my cell. I thought you would. Zion and RJ predicted right now to go 1-2 in the draft. That would, that would just be a horrible precedent for college basketball, would it not? If he took up that well, advice? It'd be, it'd be a horrible precedent for Zion Williams. Yeah, agreed. Sweeney, too little. Too strong. Steve pulls down the rebound. So under three minutes to play, first half. K-State is led throughout by as many as 13. Six to shoot. A long two. Man. Tough shots. <laughs> Nothing but net. Tough shots. And, and he's always surveying. And then he gets to that spot. And he really is feeling it. Those are not shots he was making early in the year. Reynolds almost stripped by Jada. Freeman launches. Almost got that to fall in. Sneed crashes into Freeman and the foul on Freeman, his third. Barry Brown's hit four of his five field goal attempts tonight. Coming off a big time week, the Big 12 player of the week, and, and another ball screen, and they have not been guarded well in this half by Oklahoma. You try to switch it there, and, and it's just too slow. Freeman can't get out there, and Brown leans back a little to get over Freeman's reach. But again, those are tough shots that he wasn't necessarily hitting consistently early in the year. But starting to feel his own, and I think having Dean Wade back, having Cam Stokes back in the lineup has really given him more space to operate. Second free throw. Coming for Xavier Sneed. For two points for Sneed. He had three points in 34 minutes Saturday at Iowa State, but he had the defensive responsibility on Marielle Shayok. He did a nice job of shutting down the Big 12's leading scorer. Skipped into the corner in a three, Kalisti. It's a big shot because Kansas State really shrinking the floor, so Wade came all the way over on the help side, and if Kalisti can hit that on the weak side, you can Start to stretch the defense a little bit. Brown in and out. The season low for first half points for Oklahoma is 25. That came in their game at Kansas. Off the right side for Maddox. Offensive rebound. Odom's wanting to go back up. Trying to dump it down low to Dulo. Gets it back. Going out of bounds. Remaining with OU. One of the things Kansas State does, they really shrink the floor, which means bringing the help side over. Dean Wade was in the middle of the lane. The skip pass to Kalixi, and he buries it. And that's where you talk about stretching the floor. You knock down those shots, it opens up that lane a little bit. Kalixi's pass too high for Doolittle. Turnover's killing. Oklahoma at double digit turnovers 11 in the first half. Here's Wade. Fighting his way through and scoring. Sometimes offense, it just is better than good defense. And that was well defended. Shows you how skilled and talented Dean Wade is. And 10 first half points for Wade. Oklahoma holding it for the final shot. Three, Christian James. So it's a season low for points in the first half for Oklahoma, but they were down by 13 and are down by six. So again, the halftime score, K-State leading it over OU 30. To 24. Let's head to the studio for the E-Trade Halftime Report with Chris Cotter, Dallin Cup, and Sean Farnham. Fellas.
About ready to start the second half. And Norman, 20th ranked OU, turned it over 11 times in the first half. We're down by as many as 13. They are down just six. 30 to 24. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday night from Norman along with Chris Patola. I'm Mark Neely. Oh, you're really fortunate to only be down six, but if you're K-State, you got to feel good about the 18 combined points you got from Dean Wade and Barry Brown. They were spectacular. Yeah, the two of them. Barry Brown especially got them going. He had two game winners Norm. last week. So what does any good marketing department do? They put him with goats. Hello, goats. I hope he checked his shoes after that. Tonight, he's been spectacular, though. Attacking the basket, get some nice stuff from the mid-range, and then Dean Wade is back. They went to him early. He was super aggressive, hit some tough shots around the basket using that 6'10 frame. The ceiling is the roof for K-State now that they've got Dean Wade back in the fold. So 18 combined in the first half for Wade and Brown and the 11 OU turnovers. And K-State has the ball to begin half two. Catch and shoot, long two good for Xavier Sneed. And what a good set coming out of halftime. Good execution, a nice little flex set. You get Xavier Sneed a shot. It's always nice for coaches. The play they draw up on the board at halftime actually works. James turns, shoots, and scores. Seven points for James. Mary Brown, four of six of that first half, including three shots that were, let's just say, a high degree of difficulty. Wade thinking with four on the clock. From 15, it rolls off. Maywean had the rebound, but a foul underneath against Oklahoma. That set right there is an example of, of Wade's impact, though. They're running a lot of ball screens with Brown and Wade, and you have to make a choice. I mean, he's going to pick and pop, and then he's got the ability to get to a spot and pull up. From the baseline. If you're a K-State fan, you got to be very happy with what you've seen from Dean Wade so far tonight. He looks like the old Dean Wade. What a talented player. Did not get a scholarship offer from Kansas. Well, Brady Manick attempted only one shot in the first half. That was a missed three. He made no doubt about that three-point attempt. And he's a guy who can shoot it. Came out like a ball of fire last year, early in his freshman season. Percentage went down. Wade. Two to shoot, Brown. McNeese fighting for it with Mayween. And he tie up. Here's Dean Wade again. They move him all over the floor, and, and it's just a, a tough guard because he can drive you. And then there's Brady Manick, who, as you alluded to, unlike Trey Young, did not get an offer from KU and other schools. No, he did not. He did not. Galixty off the back rim. Doolittle kept that alive with his hustle. And Manick's three, well off the left side. Lead is five for K-State. They have never trailed tonight. Wide open from the corner, Stokes. Doolittle surveys, hesitates, starts the drive, lost it underneath. Mannix saved it, but threw it to Sneed. He's got Wade coming down, and now will slow it up for Barry Brown. Elects to shoot a three. Oh, wow. Feeling it tonight. Barry Brown Jr. I mean, now you're just dancing on him. That, that's, a, that's a playground move right there. James trying to answer his foul shooting a three by Barry Brown. You know, he's really been a good driver of late, but here, that's just too much space from Christian James. And that's what they call a buddy shot. Defender coming right at him. 
And he is talented. I mean, what a run he had through the tournament last year. Of course, Kansas State playing without Dean Wade in that NCAA tournament run they had. And Barry Brown, known for his defense, has become a very accomplished scorer. And checking the monitor to see if it was indeed a three-point attempt. It will be three free throws, and it will be indeed three shots coming after the foul committed by Brown. We are talking about Dean Wade not getting an offer from KU. He, he looked up to, and here's the shot. He's clearly behind the, the three-point line. Dean Wade looked up to Ron Baker when he was in high school. Ron Baker, who ended up at Wichita State, played for the Knicks, or plays for the Knicks now. Ron Baker's from Western Kansas, like Dean Wade. And, and, you know, Baker didn't get a whole lot of interest from KU, ended up at Wichita State. And then Dean Wade, who probably wouldn't have gone there anyway, got a little bit of, of interest from Kansas, but uh, ends up at Kansas State. Said it was, uh, it was the best fit for him. Yeah, he was the Gatorade Kansas High School Player of the Year coming out of St. John High School. And he is... Just his personality, he, he's a relatively quiet guy. I mean, the vocal leader is no question Barry Brown. But when it comes to the skill set, Dean Wade has all the measurements. Well, and he, and he fits the prototype at that size for the league. I mean, he's going he's gonna to play in the NBA. He's going to make money playing his game. And, and he just he can put it on the floor. He's a good rebounder, can hit a face-up shot. And a guy for the first couple of years in the Big 12, his coaches implored him to shoot more. And he's going to put it up. <laughs> and that's why he should shoot as much as he can. <laughs> when it's open, he drains it, and it's a nine-point lead again for K-State. 15 for Wade, who's on the doorstep of passing Mitch Richmond in scoring at K-State. Manic is having a better second half for OU. Wade screen, a Brown two. You can't give him any space tonight. Ed. That's a nice little one-two combo. 13 for Brown. Tied up. And there's Wade and Brown converging on that play right there on the defensive side. This dude, Dean Wade, man, he is back. And he is aggressive here tonight. Shows you his ability to hit a face-up shot. 6'10", he's the new age big guy. Buckets! <laughs> well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Can Kansas do it for a 15th consecutive year? They shared with Texas back in 08. Won it out right in 9, 10, 11, and 12. They shared with K-State in 2012-13 and have been sole possession of first each of the last five seasons. K-State fans remember that 2012-13 season well. They lost to Oklahoma State the last regular season game. Had they won that, K-State would have won the conference out right that year. They went 17-1 and at home. Their only home loss was to Kansas that season. And right now, Kansas Half game behind Texas Tech. Texas Tech next plays at Baylor on Saturday. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, really? What do you think right now? Only four to five games in. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a fool. So I, I'll probably, uh, I'm going to say Texas Tech. I, I think they're the best team right now. I think they have the, the ability to be the most consistent as we move forward. And, and part of that is... Not having Doka as a bookie, I, I think that's a significant loss. I mean, they are much better with him, or were much better with him in their lineup. So I think this is the year. I, I think Texas Tech gets it done. Stokes, got it. How about, man, they're shooting the ball well tonight. And offensively, it, it just shows you what one guy, the impact he can have on everybody else. 
Well, the winner of this game tonight is going to be three and two in conference play. And K-State was picked in the coaches' poll preseason in the Big 12 to finish second behind Kansas. It's Richard Odoms, who had a nice first half, picking up where he left off here in the second half. Well, you know, Kansas State is one of those teams, if you're into the stock market, where you would buy now. I mean, there's no question they are going to continue to get better. And, and they're, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they evolve. I mean, Texas Tech, to me, first of all, the coaches in this league are outstanding. There's no secret that Texas Tech has had a resurgence because of Chris Beard. I think he's one of the top five coaches in the country. I think Jared Culver may be the best. Uh, you could argue Dedrick Lawson, but one of those two guys is the best player in the Big 12, and they really get after you on the defensive end. Well, this certainly isn't the first year the folks have had questions about Kansas repeating as regular season champion. Hall of Fame head coach Bill Self always seems to pull something out of a bag of tricks. A hold and a foul. <laughs> Texas Tech, I mentioned, plays Saturday at Baylor, but they're home tonight in Iowa State on ESPNU. Well, that's why games like that or games like this are huge. I mean, half the league is 2-2, two and two. and teams have had a hard time winning at home. Last Saturday, the league was 1-4 at home. So if you're K-State, two teams here that are 2-2 two and two to get a, a win on the road would be huge. Stockard had it knocked out of his hands, but right to sneak, K-State somehow keep in possession but the shot clock winding down and they throw it away but even though they threw it away there they somehow kept that alive much longer than it looked like they were going to be able to oh and it's a dead ball turnover so they get to set their defense which has been outstanding in the half court tonight james stockard backed off so james elected to shoot and odom's there with the putback. Owens has had a real nice night for Oklahoma coming off the bench. Ooh, got him. The enemy, the steal. Gives it up. Owens stripped by Jada. Offensive foul on the Sooners. That's a big time play by Sneed. I couldn't tell from here whether or not he was in the restricted arc, but John Higgins making that call. And he's not. That's a really good call by John Higgins. And boy, I'll tell you what, that's a that is an anticipatory step in right there. And just, you know, the enemy, you got to attack. You had it one on one. Trying to make a play behind you there is not the right play in transition. Seven minutes gone here in the second half. A seven-point lead for K-State. And Barry Brown extends that with a long two. You know, Daryl Morey with the Houston Rockets is having an aneurysm now with the two-point mid-range shots that Barry Brown is living on tonight. But my goodness, he's had about four of those off the bounce. So you're referring to the analytics where he should step back a little bit yeah. two to three. Guys like that, they hate those long twos. It's either threes or layups. And Brown is living in the mid-range tonight. Barry Brown once again. There's another one. Got it! He is smoking hot tonight, Barry Brown Jr. The enemy for a Freeman three. Skying for the rebound, James Walpaw. Sneed clears for K-State. Here comes Brown. What's he going to do this time? In and out. Foul underneath on Oklahoma. Percentages, shooting percentages typically go down when you put the ball on the floor. Barry Brown is flouting that convention here tonight. One dribble, two dribble, pull up, tough shots. It is wet.
looks forward to that. Thanks so much, Chris. No carnival parking like that time. Kind of disappointed in that. May Ween shooting over McNeese. He's had a good night, too. I mean, anytime they've thrown it to him down there, he's gotten a good shot off. And it starts with McNeese just playing behind, allowing him to catch it easy. Tie up possession arrow will keep it with Kansas State. Pardon me with Oklahoma, that is. Reynolds sealed off in the lane and open three from the enemy. Oklahoma searching for offense. The enemy's made an impact since he's come in and now he's on the ball. The girl fires a three, it's short. Rebounded off the floor by Odom, so he'll slow it down to the front court for the Sooners. Too little from 12. He's been on such a tear, scoring the ball. You'd love to see him get something going here in the last 10 minutes if you're Oklahoma. Sooners back within eight. We're near the midway point of this second half. Giada collides with the enemy. Deep three, Stokes, offensive board. Jana had it stripped by McNeese. On the run, Reynolds feeds Odoms. Jump stop in the lane. And he's fouled in the shoot two. Hey, tip off your weekend with our next NBA Friday doubleheader at 8 Eastern. It's Spurs T-Wolves. And then we'll take you to Staples Center for the Clippers. Hosting Steph KD and the Warriors. And our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. And the Wolves start to play better. Odd career for them. We do have uh, a Larry Legend number sighting with the Celtics. What's up with Boston? Yeah. yeah well, hey. It's not been uh, it's not been a good scene. That Eastern Conference there. She may be, she could be a Bird fan in the audience. She could also be a Brady Manic fan. Autumn's well, misses both. May Ween had a step on McNeese who then grabbed and fouled. Picks up his third. McNeese. They're trying to really come back from that ankle spray. Not 100% by any stretch. Brown from the corner. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you're Oklahoma, a big part of getting stops down the stretch here is you have to be able to guard Barry Brown and or Dean Wade. And those guys are killing Oklahoma. Odoms in a crowd gave it up for McNeese, who's fouled by May Ween. Well, with this bucket, Barry Brown passes Cartier Martin for eighth place in the all-time scoring list at K-State. That's not well defended. I mean, uh, you, you go under the screen. There's no help jumping out on a guy who is killing He's wide open on that shot. You see Wayne and Brown have combined for 35 of the 54. And now Oklahoma... Scuffling from the line. They haven't really shot well from there all night. 4 12. Another empty possession for OU. They are 4 of 13 from the foul line. Turnovers and missed free throws, killing Oklahoma. Dean Wade. In the corner, out of bounds. And that's going to stay with K-State. Well, I jumped the gun just a bit with Barry Brown. He's actually tied with Cartier Martin at 1,546 career points. I got a feeling by the end of the night, though, 
He'll be solidly alone in eighth place. On the all-time scoring list for the Cats. Out of bounds, and again remaining with the edge of stage. 20 points for Barry Brown, 9 of 13 from the field. He's hit two of his three three-point shots. Now he's the reigning Big 12 player of the week. Off the right side, a tip. Loose ball, Mayreen. And right now, really it's been all night. Kansas State has just been a little step ahead of Oklahoma. Have. They have. They've been the more physical team. They've been first to the ball. Thirteen point lead equals their largest of the night. Not much going on in this possession so far for the Sooners. Shot clock's down to six. And a lot of standing. Odoms. Two, one, off the glass. And they do get the points just as the shot clock is expiring. 13 points for Odoms. That's a season high for him. He's had a nice night. And it's, it's really come just driving the basketball. I mean, not much going on in that possession. He just straight line drives it. Stokes. May Ween on Doolittle with a grab by Doolittle. 20 points tonight for Barry Brown. Barry Brown, they're calling him the GOAT now. Hello, GOATs. <laughs> Check those sneakers, Barry. You never know what's on those things coming out of a GOAT pen. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, get your cardio in early Saturday, then hit the recliner for a great day. Begins at 3.30 Eastern on ABC with the Thunder Sixers. And how about Virginia and Duke? It's a big-time game right there. And then you got the fight night main event wrapping it up with Henry Cajeto taking on T.J. Dillashaw from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Big Saturday ahead. For that Virginia team, we all know about Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy and DeAndre Hunter. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't seen Kihei Clark, he is the next big thing at Virginia. What a revelation he's been. Undersized, but a huge heart. Outstanding player. Cam Stokes playing without a shoe, playing defense. An offensive a rebound there by Maywin, and they'll stop play. So Stokes, you get a shoe put back on. You said Michigan's the best team I for do. quite a while. Back in November, uh, you know, I saw them up in the Mohegan Sun in that tournament, and I just think they, to me, they're the best combination of a team that will guard you and then can score, and they can score in a lot of different ways. You know, the one knock people have said is that they're not that deep, but to me, older teams don't have to be deep because they're, they're going to stay out of foul trouble. They're going to be smart about things like that. And as long as they stay healthy, I think they're the best team. You know, the other thing with Virginia is it's not just winning games. They are pounding teams. I mean, absolutely pounding teams. And you see the field goal percentage for this game, which K-State has shot it even better here in the second half. And with seven minutes to go, Chris, as well as K-State has played, I almost feel like they should be up by more than 11. Well, that's what low possession games, what will happen, where you, you feel like a team is really putting it on another one as the differential is not that much but they're shooting almost 50 percent in this game against one of the nation's best defensive teams in oklahoma well the jada three is giving them their largest lead of the night of 14 points kalixti quick hands from stokes loose ball picked up by jada outlet comes to sneed he's got brown with him and barry brown with that bucket has officially moved in front of cartier martin for eighth on the all-time scoring list of K-State, timeout Oklahoma. Barry Brown has played well against Oklahoma in his career. Tonight, no exception, he's got 22 to this point. Timeout with 6.26 to go.
This Saturday, we have another big SEC-ACC doubleheader on ESPN. It starts at 4 Eastern, number 12, Kentucky, and number 14, Auburn. Then Zion Williamson and number one, Duke, taking on number four, Virginia. Never stops. I bet that rim is going. Anybody but Zion. You cannot leave Zion Williamson open at the rim. Come on, Scotty Pippen. We don't need to lose Zion Williamson right now. Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Come on, Scotty. Odoms scoring off the glass. <laughs> He's been the one consistent offensive scorer for Oklahoma tonight. It has been a real struggle finding somebody else to put the ball in the basket. Sneed, a wide open three, nails it. K-State fans have to be thinking, is this the same team that got run out by 20 in their own building by Texas to start conference? Lost to Texas Tech. We're down by 21 to West Virginia and staring 0-3 and maybe in 0-4 conference start right in the face. It's and amazing what adding one guy will do. It's like your, your big brother showing up at the park. You just, you know, you put your chest out a little bit more. You feel more confident about yourself. And Dean Wade's back, and this team is different. And Cartier Jada giving up his body, fighting two suitors for that loose ball. And they've been the first to the floor, first to lose balls. They've been a step ahead all night. You know, in this, you know, they were 0-2 in the Big 12. And at the beginning of last week, before their game against West Virginia, Bruce Weber drew up on the board, be the best team in the Big 12 this week. And they went out, they won two games at the buzzer, which Puts him at two and two, and now they get way back. Stokes is starting to get healthy, and Barry Brown is playing at another level. And they haven't missed a free throw tonight. Six of six as Jada hits both. Well, free throws have been an issue for the Sooners tonight, just four of 13. Too little spinning on Wade. Foul on Dean Wade. Kansas State fouls on Dean Wade. Wade tonight, 15 points in 21 minutes. And three seals as well. Wow. And the free throw line tonight for the Sooners has been a big bugaboo. One. So he splits the pair one and two. A 16 point deficit go for the Sooners as we slip under the five minute mark. Jada loses it, saves it on the sideline. Dean Wade has just passed Mitch Richmond, one of the all-time greats of the Wildcats, for 11th place on the all-time scoring list for K-State. Stokes, a strip, but a foul call in the process. This is the action that other Big 12 coaches are watching and scratching their heads. It's that pick and pop. It's really hard to guard because that guard coming off can drive it. But if you don't if you don't switch that, I mean that's really the only way to guard it. You have to switch it. You have to talk the switch because he's just gonna pop and stick it in your face. Mitch Richmond, one of the all-time greats for Kansas State. When you pass Mitch Richmond, you've done something right. <laughs> yes, you have. Too little. Loose ball picked up by Stokes. Now keep in mind, Rich Mitch uh, Mitchell plays a couple years. I mean, that guy can score. Yes. As can Dean Way. Not quite at the proficiency of the gentleman he just passed, but Mitch Richmond now an assistant at St. John's with his former Golden State Warriors teammate, Chris Mullen. 
teams. They have a very good team this year. Well, Mitch Richmond was on the K-State team that lost in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four to Kansas. And their head coach the was Lon Kruger. Kansas State should have won it. Kansas won that and went on and was the surprise winner of the national championship, beating a great Oklahoma team in Kansas City in 1988. Danny Manning had a lot to do with that. Yes, he did. What, you, you don't think his miracles <laughs> contributed? He contributed yes. some, yes. Give some credit to the miracles. Bypass Odom's finds Christian James. Still 17-point lead. This has been methodical. I mean, it's just a, it's been a methodical takedown by Kansas State. They've been very patient offensively, and they've made Oklahoma work offensively. Wade left it short that time. This is, again, there's still over three minutes to play here, Chris. A little contact, a late whistle, but the foul on Snead is going to be three free throws. Coming up for James when we come back to Norman. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Hey, good day there, Chris. Had to drop a little off the action. Say good day. Yeah. If Put another Chris, shrimp on the bar. If, if, if Connor can be a carnival barker, I could try my off the action. A ludicrous fan, and you have an Australian <laughs> accent. I'm learning a lot, Mark. They learned that Sports Center tonight follows Pelicans Warriors, and after the buzzer was Stan and Neil from LA. They'll take a look at the biggest concerns inside the NFC and AFC championship games. Also, Harden's historic case. For MVP and Rachel Nichols exclusive interview with Boogie Cousins ahead of his long away to return on Friday. Sports Center tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern. I'm always in for an exclusive with Boogie Cousins. Yes. Sports Center tonight. Right, Oklahoma 7 of 18 from the line. K-State, Chris, as they turn it over, the enemy with the steal. Wade, Sneed, called a foul on Sneed. I was just about to say, though, how really crisp a game from beginning to near the end here that K-State has played tonight. Yeah, it's been methodical. I mean, there, there's been a precision to what they've done tonight, and, and they've executed offensively. Uh, again, having Wade back, you now have that other weapon within that offense, but they've they've come out with energy. And then I think on the other end, you know, part of it is Oklahoma all year has struggled to score. Christian James has not played well of late. But they've made Oklahoma work. And tough shots, even shots around the rim, have been tough to come by. Well, Kansas State had lost six consecutive true road games dating back to last year when they went to Ames over the weekend. One there, they're about to win two in a row. They hang on here over the last two and a half minutes. And now they're up 13. Steed underneath and Wade the stuff. I'm sure his foot is not 100%. It may not be all year, but Dean Wade is back. He is back, yes. He is back, and the duo of Brown and Wade, the, the law firm, is back. 42 of their 69 points tonight coming from those two guys. Go, 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 
clock winding down for James in a crowd is fouled. These have been billable hours tonight from the law firm of Brown and Wade. Getting into shape, getting back to game speed, figuring out where your shots are coming from, I mean, all that stuff. You can't just manufacture a good play when you've been out. And talking with Coach Weber today, it seemed like the recovery of Wade happened at a quick pace last week. It, it kind of came to a point where he was like, hey, I think I'm ready. They got him on the court with practice, and boom, he was playing in Ames. Brown works his way down the lane, reverses, couldn't get that pretty move with the finish to go. James fouled by Wade, and one. Remember Saturday, another big SEC, ACC doubleheader on ESPN. It starts at 4 Eastern, number 12 Kentucky, number 14 Auburn. Then Zion Williamson, number one Duke, looking to bounce back from that loss on Monday to Syracuse as they host Number four in unbeaten Virginia at Cameron Indoor. And a sonic blockbuster, which you can also always watch on the ESPN app. How he Lee comes Lee out, Lee. Uh, but what a night for him. He, he is, I mean, it's, it's fun to watch him play, too, because you can never really speed him up. I mean, that's the other thing about a guy coming off an injury is sometimes they're a little quick. He, he just, he's been in control tonight. He fouls out of a game for the second time this year. Christian James has scored the last 11 points for OU in that 11-2 run for the Sooners. And they're down 10, but just over a minute to go. Brown. Why not? has been his night. He came in averaging 17 points per game against the Sooners. He's obliterated that tonight. The 25-point game. Don't forget, we're going to send you to Melbourne coming up next, the Australian Open. But Kansas State is going to improve to 3-2 in conference. 13 and 4 overall, and the Sooners are going to drop to 13 and 4 overall, and 2 and 3 in conference, and lose at home for the first time this year. This will be the first home loss for the Sooners since February 17th of last year against Texas. They had won seven in a row here to begin this year. The substitutions in returning for the Sooners is Reynolds. And the Sooners he replaces Reynolds. are at Texas on Saturday. And Kansas State will be home against TCU after two consecutive road wins for the Wildcats. 74-61. K-State led throughout. And an impressive win for Bruce Weber's Cats tonight. We were talking about the balance of power in the Big 12. Kansas State a loud statement tonight, Mark. They win it 74-61. For Chris Patola and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Neely. So long from Norman now, let's send you to Melbourne Park for second round coverage of the Australian Open.